Victory is powered by two nuclear reactors buried deep in her hull. Each reactor produces 175 megawatts of power, enough to run a small city. Victory is nuclear powered, so it's producing virtually no carbon dioxide at all. At full power through the thickest ice, she'll use perhaps half a kilogram, just one pound of uranium a day. If powered by oil, she could use over 100 tonnes of fuel a day. And I'm standing right beside one of the two nuclear reactors aboard uh, this ship. There's one here and there's one at the far side. And they're generating this incredible power of 70,000 horsepowers. Now, I'm not certain exactly what that is, but all I know is that it can cut through the thickest of ice. And that's what it's doing at the moment, cutting its way to the North Pole. Mile after mile, the White Sea stretches out before us. The ship will need all its 75,000 horsepower to get through this. The ship is breaking its way through the ice. It's absolutely remarkable. The ice here is only a metre and a half to two metres thick. That's six, maybe seven feet thick. And it's just cutting its way through at the moment. There's a strong wind and it's biting cold with the huge chunks of ice. But we're now moving through the hard pack ice at around 15 or 16 knots. But when really pushed, Victory can crash through ice almost three metres or ten foot thick. And to see her 25,000 tonnes roaring along at 20 knots, it's hard not to be staggered by the nuclear fires in this ship's belly. This is probably the nicest moment of this trip so far. Standing here on the top of the ship, the two nuclear reactors powering it along. Now I'm sure some people will say, oh my God, what's the world coming to when we're using nuclear power to get up here? But that's what it takes. The big problem, of course, is the nuclear fuel itself. Can it ever be safely handled? And what to do with the waste and the reactors once they're redundant? And in the past, the Soviets and the Russians did not have a good record in this regard. The Arctic was often used as a convenient dumping ground, and this water we are cruising over now is one of the greatest marine nuclear dumping grounds in the world. No wonder the Soviet's Arctic realm was once one of the most secretive regions on Earth. And even today, environmental groups are finding it almost impossible to discover the true extent of just what happened up here in the ice. Leaving Franz Joseph land behind, victory ploughs ahead into the ice. We're on course to reach the pole in record time. We 
we are making very good progress, we are moving very quickly. And given our present speed and the way the ice looks ahead, I would suggest you, uh, if you are not already starting to get ready, I would suggest you start to put on some warm clothes and prepare to go out onto the bath. 58, 69, it's just within one nautical mile of the pole. The doomsday media reports of an ice-free North Pole seem far-fetched. The ice sheet here is thick. The sound of cracking ice fills the air. This is so precise. What's happening now is so precise. We are just actually, we're on the North Pole, but it's just there. They want to maneuver the boat right to 90 degrees. And I repeat, what's happening, this boat, this massive, enormous boat has been placed right on the top of the Earth. The captain has promised his wealthy passengers that he will get them to exactly 90 degrees north. But the weather has changed dramatically and the polar winds are making the captain's job all the more difficult. So we're within just the length of a ship. We're now within the length of a ship from the North Pole. OK, ladies and gentlemen, the North Pole is just at this pressure ridge just ahead of us. We're just about to get there, so I want you to join me. We actually have reached the North Pole, but believe it or not, the captain is still trying to place the ship on that very precise point. All together, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But believe it, we have reached the top of the earth. You made it. <laughs> well done. It's very hard work. Very hard work. <laughs> Three millimeters. Three millimeters. <laughs> it took. It took a good few. across those poles very many times. The polar winds, yeah, yeah. but you made.